Hello, it's Moon Kamalk, and today I have a digital smart control panel to show you. Now, what is a control panel in general? Essentially, if you have a whole bunch of farms or contraptions that yet want to have control in kind of like a central control room, the basics is you kind of just have multiple levers, and it's all big and clunky and that kind of stuff. And the more you have, the bigger it gets. Uh, so then Mumbo Jumbo designed one four years ago where instead of having essentially a lever, indicator, and a um, sign thing for each one, uh, he had so it's a button and an electron, so you go in the electron, change the book to whatever farm it is, and then you hit the button to talk it on and off with the uh, lamp here as an indicator to see if it's already on or not. Now there's some downsides with this, is it's kind of slow to use because first you have to go in and change it to wherever you want. And the other thing is you can't even see the farms on or off until you exit the book. And the other thing is in order to turn on and off after you select the page, you have to exit the book and hit the button. And that there is kind of tedious. So I designed one where all of this functionality is located in the one new block, the crafter. So as you can see here, right now they're all off, but if I want to turn one on, I just hit the enter key. And as you can see, the the redstone output comes on, meaning the farm's on. And then if I want to go and do a different one here, all these ones are off. And I'll just turn on the last one here. And let's just turn one on in the middle here somewhere. So let's just do that. So now this one's on. And as you can see, the first one, the last one, and the last one I just did, all those uh, outputs are on. And as you can see, it's actually more compact than Mumbo's version. And it also has additional benefit is uh, unlike uh, better control panel designs where you can't do um, the only way to turn on and off is through the, the selection itself. This here has additional option where if you want to have feedback from the farm saying, hey, storage is full, I want you to turn off or as emergency kill switch kind of thing, uh, you can essentially uh, manually power it from the top here. Uh, to actually have external control or if you want to ha have multiple of these in parallel and use them like for an elevator where you can choose multiple floors at once that works too so essentially to do that uh, one side you do that and then on the other side you just uh, power it like that and that's how you get independent control if you want to have external controls controlling it on top of uh, the user defi uh, defined options so there's that uh, and then also on top of the um, the red indicator here, I'll just turn this one off. As you see, when I turn it off, it turns off. And then that those red lights there also turn off. So if I go back to the first one here, as you can see, uh, unless it's the first one I did, yeah, it's the first one I turned off by manual. And let me turn it back on. As you can see, the red light's there, and that's another indicator that's on. Now, a couple things that this is dependent on uh, is, since it's still in the snapshots, when the crafter is fully blocked, it has to be have a single shank of nine. If it goes to 15, this design completely breaks. Uh, for the uh, the bulbs, if they um, ever changes, so different ones have different shanks, pick the one that has the highest one for this to work. Uh, then that's pretty well uh, the overview of how it works. Uh, now the specific circuits of it, so essentially uh, the orange circuit here is essentially the decoder. And what its job is, is basically, let me just actually just change one. Uh, let's do that, turn you on. As you can see, it basically just selects whatever one you have selected in the moment. And then the this white line here with the target blocks, that's essentially your enter key. So whenever you hit the enter, it uh, essentially turns on or off uh, whatever uh, one you have selected. And then that there just goes out to the output. So you have the farm contraption output. So if you uh, essentially, if you want to carry them on, you would have um, essentially one go up, the next one go down below in order to make it so the, the signals don't cross. So there's that. And then just on the other side here, we have the on off indicator to the display. Essentially you just have the redstone wire go up to the front and essentially power the crafter. And then how we actually detect that you hit the enter key is using the CUD, which I just made a video on. So if you don't understand what the hell that is, you can watch that and you can understand why. So essentially that there, once it detects that, goes into a pulse extender, which then goes into that the enter key line that I just mentioned earlier. However, since the CUD is detected every time you make a change and not just when you hit the enter key, I have this purple circuit here, which is essentially the CUD blocker. So it detects when the single change is here and it does it into a pulse extender, which then essentially pulls up this block, making the, the CUD not output not going into here. Pulse extenders are just to prevent spam. So even if you spam options here, it won't break 
teleport you have to try extremely hard to but I haven't been able to pull it off by spamming it so that is the overview of it now for the build tutorial what I'll do here is I'll start with this um, so essentially here uh, you want to have a crafter uh, for this I just use an anvil to rename the crafter to wherever you want I just named it keypad number equals disabled slots plus one because of that uh, and then this here is uh, lightly stained uh, gray glass panes because uh, they essentially are invisible in the inventory uh, so then uh, to start with uh, the build volume is a uh, six wide by 14 long and eight tall so to start here I'll just uh, place the crafter facing down mostly because you can have an any orientation however I like having the buttons at the uh, the, the lights at the front so let's do that um, I'll replace this uh, okay so starting from this way here put have your first solid block and then work on the decoder circuit so essentially what you want to do is have a comparator into a redstone dust which then goes up a block into another redstone dust and then that there goes into two more comparators and then you want to go out nine one two three four five six seven eight nine and then you want to go uh, down one here and then go out nine again and then place your nine repeaters going along like that and then place redstone dust going along like that and then place uh, another row of blocks on top of like that and then another redstone line dust like that and then another line blocks separating the two lines and then from the front here what you want to do is essentially place a row of blocks with another row of repeaters on it again and then essentially a uh, line of torches on this bottom one here and then a row of blocks on that and then place a um, where here you want to place a row of torches on top of that there so it should look something like that and then what you want to do is have your um, sticky pistons oh, uh, hold shift whenever you place it uh, have them placed along there and then have your regular pistons uh, stick on here do that do that do that and the other thing you can do is um, I just built it kind of like since it's tileable you just want to break this torch here and break this block here because they are actually not needed so you save a little bit of resources there so then right now with just what you have uh, I already had the, the stained glass in here but as you can see when I select a different one you can see the pistons moving in the background and that tells you that you built it correctly so now what you want to do is grab yourself some target blocks and place them on the sticky pistons here uh, place some gravity blocks I'm not doing uh, the what I call it the output cutter coded so I'll just use the same block along here so there's that grab yourself some slabs uh, oh. Uh, I'll just use the quartz slab and place them on the lower half of the essentially target block of when they're extracted place a redstone line of dust on that and let me just grab a uh, random clutter uh, what clutter we hadn't used yet uh, let use blue so on the one side here let's just do all our different outputs while we're here do something like that uh, and then grab your redstone comparators, place them along here. There's that option. And then on the other side here, I'll just pick this purple clutter since that's kind of the indicator one. What you want to do is essentially just go like that and place your redstone comparators again, connect them all up. So that's kind of that. So now let's work on the uh, the code or the detection. So first of all, you got to have your um, let me suck here. Let me just grab the things that 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 uh, and that. So you need to place a solid block here and then have a observer facing uh, upwards there with a comparator on top into a block into the sticky piston into a composter which needs to be completely full do that place your block like you see it does that and then from there what you want to do is I'll just grab the quartz 
keep things because now we're doing essentially the power circuit here or the enter key circuit should say uh, you want to have your uh, block uh, comparator here into a block which then runs into a block down here and then you want to play, make a free by free grab some redstone dust uh, do that place that into two comparators pointing in opposite directions have a solid block here into redstone dust there into a narrow redstone dust there and have an observer pointed up on top of the comparator closest to the, um, the tileable decoder have a piston on there and then have an observer with the back end pointing towards here and then just have a quartz block there and that's that uh, one thing we can do across the top here while we're here is grab uh, a copper bulb and then essentially just place them along here so there's that um, and then from there what you want to do is now the the blocking circuit of the thing because right now whenever you change something it powers it but we want to make it so it's only the enter key so to do that what we need is an observer here here um, let me just do that that okay oh and I need a slab so observer pointing up on the first one here don't worry it doesn't cut off the redstone single going up you want to go with that into a block there and then have form this kind of like a Y shape here and then have a redstone dust go into a repeater and have it click on it once and then from there you want that to go into a block into two slabs on either side and then into a solid block on either side, fill up the top with uh, redstone dust, uh, place this one down, place a redstone comparator facing that direction, uh, place a redstone torch on this side, and have your sticky piston facing downwards. And that's essentially the blocker circuit. So now, wherever you change it, it should not trigger anymore. So now let's just finish up the indicator one so you know when one is actually powered or not. So essentially what you want to do is uh, well, like that, go down one, and then ha get a dropper, a hopper, put any item in it, as long as it's a stack of 64 one, and uh, have your redstone line run up and over the, the dropper. And then from here, what you want to do is have a solid block into a comparator, into a block, into a redstone dust. And as you can see, that should be all. So now if you just uh, go back uh, to, it should come on because that's the one we tested. I'll just turn off. As you can see, turn off. So then we can just do that. And let just turn them off, turn the first one on, and let turn on the last one do that and let's just turn on this one here and then as you can see those are the ones that are on and we get the indicator of um, in here and also on the crafter block itself that is all have a good day see you later